If you are a born again Christian and you have children or you're around children, then you know that there is a demonic force after our kids. Everything from the time they are born is to get them to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Luke twenty two thirty one, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. So the devil wants you. He desires to have you. He'll do whatever he can to get you. And just like the Lord Jesus Christ has preachers, the devil has his preachers. In 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen through 15 it says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Satan's henchmen are transformed as ministers of righteousness. Satan himself is an angel of light. That's why people don't see anything wrong with some of the wicked things that's going on today. But Satan has his little imps. They are called entertainers or stars or rappers or singers or actors. Possessed with devils, yet make more money in a week than you do in your entire life. And I'm going to show you how the music industry is against Jesus Christ and wants your child to choose to flesh the world and the devil over God. In 1 Kings 21.20, it says, And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. The music industry has sold itself to work evil. The saying they sold their souls to the devil is a biblical statement. And a popular rapper by the name of Drake, he also is part owner or something of the Toronto Raptors, he has an interesting lyric in his song called Sicko Mode, a song he did with another man, another filthy mouth man. And it's funny that's the name of the song because that's what these guys are. It's complete sickos. Rich trash is all they are. And that's what our kids are listening to today. They're being influenced by these wicked men. And the Bible says evil communications corrupts good manners. It's evil communication when they listen to these wicked men that's influencing them to live and act like the devil. And these men, they remind you of the church of Laodicea and the book of Revelation because the, the church of Laodicea say they are rich, yet the Lord says they are rich, wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Uh, Drake is nothing but a overpaid sex pervert. But the phrase he said in the song is, I quote, Jesus Christ checks over stripes pretty much saying i'd rather have money than jesus christ instead of saying i'd rather have jesus more than anything i know he's saying i'd rather have money than jesus christ how do you know this because if you look in first peter chapter 2 verse 24 it says who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed before the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, they whipped him, they beat him, they plowed up his back, and blood ran out of the stripes. In the song Sicko Mode, Drake's filthy mouth said, Jesus Christ checks over stripes. And this is no surprise considering in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10, it says, For the love of money... Is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Drake has the love of money, and he would choose money over the Lord Jesus Christ. In Proverbs 23, 5, it says, Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Riches can only buy you temporary things on earth. It's foolish to choose that over the Lord Jesus Christ. Drake also has a song called God's Plan. Yet he could care less about the God of the Bible's plan. The God of the Bible is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
God wants everyone to be saved, but Drake's plan is to get rich off kids and a bunch of suckers. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.13, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Drake thinks he's so smart, yet he's deceived by the devil himself, and the devil is using him just as a puppet to deceive your kids. Drake is an evil man. And the Bible says, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Drake is as much of a sex pervert as any sodomite or pedophile. He has half-naked women dancing around in his videos. He played a sodomite character in a TV show. And his lyrics are just filthy and sexual. Atheists and other Bible rejectors pretend that the Bible and God are sexist towards women, yet they support filth like Drake who degrade women in every video. It's just a bunch of hypocrisy. The Bible speaks highly of a good woman. For example, in Proverbs 31.10, it said, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price as far above rubies? But all women are to Drake is something he can act out his sex perversion on. In his song called Hotline Bling, he raps or mumbles or does something about a girl calling him on his cell phone late at night. Just perversion. Second Peter 2.14 says, Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin. His lyrics are nothing but promoting sexual immorality. It's nothing but fornication in the man's music. It's nothing but adultery and lust. You listen to filth like that, and you'll think filthy. It makes you think filthy while you work, while you drive down the road, and even when you lay your head to sleep at night, you wonder, why do you do such wicked stuff? You act out what you think about. In Jude 1.8, it says, Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Do you walk around listening to this music and you have the most ungodly, wicked, lustful thoughts when you're at work, when you're in bed, and you just act out these wicked thoughts the best way you know how it's because you're listening to filthy music but another very very satanic rapper straight out of the pits of hell is a man named marshall mathers or better known by eminem but this satanic henchman is old enough to be my dad yet he's still writing lyrics that a young mass shooter would write and as a lost third grader i would listen to eminem after school and I mean, I thought he was old then, but a reoccurring thing with these perverts is that they never seem to grow up. And if this guy can go to Bojangles and get a senior citizen's discount on coffee, then why would he still be rapping? I mean, he could be somebody's grandfather. Uh, we know we are in perilous times because when I was a kid, when you thought of Mama and Papa, you thought of somebody that was old that acted old, that went to Hardee's every morning and ate breakfast and talk about how cheap gas used to be. But now the papaws are rappers. Uh, now the mamaws and papaws are just deadbeats half the time. Uh, what are the kids of today going to be when they are old enough to be grandparents? That's a scary thought. There won't be any more dropping your kids off at grandma's house because mamaw's going to be doped up. But here is a lyric from the Eminem song titled Venom. He says, I quote, Knock, knock, let the devil in. Male male malevolent as I've ever been. Head is spinning this medicine. And that's exactly what you do when you listen to Eminem. You let the devil in. The Bible talks about creepers who creep into houses. In 2 Timothy 3, 6, it says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and leave captive silly women laden with sins led away with diverse lusts. So there's something that can creep into your house. Eminem's song is called Venom. And when Paul, a man of God in the Bible, wrote about dirty sinners, he said this about them in Romans 3.13. He said, Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Eminem is deadly to your teenager. He's been infecting kids since the late 90s. And ain't it strange how the Venom movie, which Eminem's song is featured on the soundtrack of the movie, the Venom movie has the one-eye symbolism on the front. But check this out. 
Some more lyrics. Eminem's songs are basically Ted Bundy's mind on paper. Here's some lyrics from his song titled Framed. He says, I quote, But when murdering females, better pay attention to these details, or you could be derailed. Better wear at least three layers of clothing or be in jail. If you get scratched because your DNA will be all up under her fingernails. So he's rapping about murdering females and having to wear clothes so that the woman's... He doesn't get his DNA up under a woman's fingernails as she's fighting it to get away. If this is not warped uh, beyond belief, I don't know what is. This is just sick. Now, another lyric from these songs. He says, Three personalities bursting out of me. Please beware. Her TV blares. Can't hear the creaking stairs. She's unaware and no underwear. She's completely bare. Turns around and screams. I remember distinctly. I said, I'm here to do sink repairs. Now listen to this. Chop her up. Put her body parts in front of Stephen Avery's trailer and leave them there. So here he's talking about killing a woman. Just wicked lyrics. Wicked, violent lyrics. The Bible says that the Lord hates violence. He hates the, the, the man that does violence. And then in Genesis, one of the reasons he brought the flood was because of violence. This is nothing but violent, perverted, sick, twisted lyrics. Sounds like something a murder rapist would rap about. And notice he said three personalities bursting out of me. It's because he's devil-possessed. He's possessed of the devil. This man is straight up rapping about murder. And this is somehow allowed. This is what is on your kids' iTunes. It's what they're listening to when they walk through the living room with their AirPods and their Beats on. And there's also a singer named Ariana Grande. And she teaches your daughter to look, look and act like a whore or a stripper. Here is lyrics from her perverted blasphemous song called God is a Woman. These are the lyrics. She says... You love it how I move you. You love it how I touch you. My one, when all is said and done, you'll believe God is a woman. And I, I feel it after midnight, a feeling that you can't fight. My one, it lingers when we're done. You'll believe God is a woman. Those are lyrics to her song. So this is a song about how she is a, a whore, obviously, and she is going to make her lover believe that God is a woman. Basically... That she is a god because she is good at being a fornicator. So the song is, God is a woman. But the truth is, we are living in a world that does worship women. They want women to run the home. They want women to just have their own career and forget about the babies at home. They make movies and write books where the man has to do everything but sell his soul just to get a date with a girl that he likes. And perverted men sit around all day and watch pornography worshiping the body of a woman we are living in a time of a bunch of little g goddesses but the reason girls are such pervs today is because of this filthy music men are more naturally perverted the women have been taught this way uh, you know we are in perilous times when the women are also turned on by sight and not just the men when a woman's turned on by sight and not by what she hears or by touch, you know it's a wicked woman. She's turned on by what she sees, and she's acting just like these whores that write these songs. But she also goes on to basically mock God in the song because she says, Lay me down and let's pray, pretending like she's some type of goddess. But what about this country music filth? This country music is straight out of hell. It's all about getting drunk and living for the flesh and loving the present evil world. And here are some lyrics from a Thomas Rhett song. It says, If I could have a beer with Jesus, heaven knows I'd sip it nice and slow. I'd try to pick a place that ain't too crowded or gladly go wherever he wants to go. This guy is a sick individual. He just said he wants to have a beer with Jesus. There's no way Jesus would have a beer with anybody. Do you, did you know 
The men who accused Jesus Christ of being a drunk was the ones who hated him and eventually killed him. They said, they said this, they said, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. And by calling him these things, they were saying he was worthy to be stoned to death under the law. Thomas Rhett and Miranda Lambert are in the same company as the Lord's wicked accusers. It's one thing to drink alcohol. It's another thing to be proud of it and use our Savior to justify it. Thomas Rhett is a wicked man. His music is wicked. Uh, Florida Georgia Line is another bunch of wicked perverts. And here are lyrics from one of their songs where they sing about worshiping, you guessed it, a woman. Now listen to these lyrics. It said, you made the brightest days from the darkest nights. You're the river bank where I was baptized. Cleanse all the demons that were killing my freedom. Let me lay you down. Give me to you. Get you singing hallelujah. We'll be touching, we'll be touching heaven. So he's singing about fornicating with a woman that he's basically worshiping. And then they go on to sing in the chorus how holy she is. They say, you're holy, holy, holy. And I'm high on loving you. Uh, they're calling a woman holy. And they're fornicating with her. This is nothing but this is teaching your kids. And you too, if you're listening to this, that fornication is okay. And you know, when they, when a lot of times when people worship their false gods, fornication is involved. When people would worship certain female goddesses fornication was involved in that and this is no different here they're just basically singing about that kind of stuff he says you're my saving grace you're my kind of church it says you're my healing hands where it used to hurt just kind of implying applying things to a woman that you would get from god yet people probably think this is a christian song and I wouldn't doubt if someone has done a solo of this in church. And then I read a, an article the other day that said, Surprise! A little Nas X performs hit song to elementary school kids. The Atlanta rapper stopped by Lander Elementary School in Mayfield Heights, Ohio to surprise students with their own personal concert Wednesday after a video of the children jamming out to his smash hit went viral across Twitter last week. But that's a shame. It's a shame they would allow such a wicked pervert in school to rap to very influential kids. And here's some lyrics to the song. He says, riding on a tractor, lean all in my bladder, which is alcohol. So he's, he's already rapping about alcohol. He said, cheated on my baby. You can go and ask her. So he's rapping about cheating on his wife. He says, my life is a movie, bull riding in boobies. So he's promoting lust and fornication. Cowboy hat from Gucci, Wrangler on my booty. So he's now he's preaching just materialism and worldliness. It's just, just in just 15 seconds, he rapped about adultery, alcohol, rebellion, and lust. The chorus is, can't nobody tell me nothing because he's a rebel but this is one of the most popular songs in the world right now and what a great surprise to the little youngins at the elementary school to have this pervert come to do a performance so that they can go home and sing about adultery alcohol rebellion and lust <clears throat> now it's going to get a little bit creepier here there's a newer singer named Billie Eilish, if I'm pronouncing her name right. And her videos have been getting about 200 million views, which is a lot considering there isn't even 200 million kids in America. But here are some of her lyrics. Listen to these lyrics. It says, she says, my Lucifer is lonely. She says, standing there killing time can't commit to anything but a crime. Peter's on vacation, 
an open invitation. Animals evidence pearly gates look more like a picket fence. Once you get inside them, got friends but can't invite them. So she's mocking heaven there. She says, hills burn in California. My turn to ignore you. Don't say I didn't warn you. Now she says all the good girls go to hell. Because even God himself... No, she says because even God herself has enemies. Notice once again you have God as a woman. That's three songs I've given you pretty much at random that I picked to do this. And just by coincidence, maybe... They all have God as a woman. And she says, And once the water starts to rise and heaven's out of sight, she'll want the devil on her team. Then she says, My Lucifer is lonely. All good girls go to hell. Then she says, Everything I do, the way I wear my noose, like a necklace. So there you have Satanism and suicide, calling God a woman, uh, mocking heaven, in a song that's got... 200 plus million views been viewed by many kids all over the world and suicide is a common theme in music today and in Mark 9 21 the man tells Jesus that the devils had came to his son since he was of a child the devils want to get you while you're young you know right now they have drag queen story time where some sex pervert sodomite dressed up like a woman reads a story to your kids that's a filthy mess i don't know about you but i don't want some nasty pervert reading to my to my kids while he's dressed up like a woman god made you a male or a female uh, you don't choose what you want to be i don't want my daughter going into a bathroom with a sissy man that can't be a man and dress like a man but we know we are in perilous times when we when you need to tell a man that he should pee standing up and in the men's bathroom and not in the little girl's room. But all the shows, the music, the movies, and entertainment is pushing this sex perversion on your kids. The devil wants to confuse them at an early age. He wants to, he wants the kindergarten teacher to say to your kids, Now children, it's up to you to decide if you want to be a boy or a girl. And that's the stupidest stuff I've ever heard. It's not up to you. You're either a boy or you're a girl. It's wrong for a man to kiss another man. It's wrong for a girl to kiss another girl. We're living in wicked times where you have to say this stuff where men are burning in their lust one toward another and women are going after each other. Men are lying down with another man. And this stuff, and this is they're trying to just push this on your kids everywhere you look. Got the pride parades. And all this stuff. But the Bible says pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. America is going to be turned into hell. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. This country deserves hell. Uh, I, I mean, I would not blame God for a second for just blowing this place up off the map. It's a wicked country, a bunch of wicked sodomite sex perverts, a bunch of baby killers. That's all abortion is, is baby kill it, killing. A bunch of wicked people that's trying to also get in our kids' mind through the music and the movies and the video games. The Fortnite stuff is of the devil. Uh, Gears of War is of the devil. All this stuff. But if, if you've listened this far and you're not saved, the best thing you need to do is get saved because we're obviously living in the last days of the church age. The rapture is about to take place. And you're going to go through the tribulation if you don't get saved. You're going to be left behind. And if you don't get saved and you die tomorrow, you're going to wake up in everlasting fire. But the Bible gives us a way out. You don't have to go to hell. In the Bible, it gives us the gospel. And the gospel is this. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. So Jesus Christ died. He died for your sins. 
he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And then there was many witnesses that seen it. It happened. Jesus Christ died for your sins because you're a sinner. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You have sinned against an almighty God. You've offended him greatly. And if you don't come to the Lord Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross to be your payment for all the sins you've done, then you will die and burn in hell for eternity. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. doesn't matter if you're a sex pervert, sodomite, cross-dressing, whatever. You can get down right now and call on the name of the Lord and be saved. The Bible says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says, God is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He doesn't want anyone to perish and go to hell. But you will go to hell. He'll let you go to hell if you want to. But if you want to be saved, all you have to do is come to the Lord Jesus Christ the best way you know how and believe on him to be your crucified, buried, and risen Savior. Quit relying on your own goodness to get you to heaven. Because you don't have any. You're unrighteous. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. You need the Lord Jesus Christ's righteousness imp imputed to you. You need his righteousness. And the only way to get that is just humble yourself and come to Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. He shed his blood on the cross for you. The Bible says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. When he died on the cross, he became sin for you. Every sin you committed was, was paid for on the cross. You just have to accept the payment. You have the option to reject the payment. But like I said, if you do, you'll burn in hell for eternity. So you need to believe on him today. And I hope you'll do it before it's too late.